Anissa should be here um, any minute. One note on Anissa, she went over 2,000 career points today. Um, so, yeah, other than that, we'll open it up, get started here with the players. Yep. Raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. Can you explain, explain the huge flip in the first four or five minutes of the second half where y'all just, just took him out? Yeah, you got to give kudos to Alabama. I mean, they're a great team on the road, and I think they came out and made a lot of shots. Um, and we just had to adjust at halftime. We were down by 10, and then I think we just dominated the second half, starting with our defense and then, of course, getting our crowd into it. The students, they came out tonight knowing that we don't have school for Monday and Tuesday. They still stayed the weekend and came out and supported. So we appreciate that, but we got to give kudos to Alabama. Um, Anissa, pretty good um, night for you tonight as you reach that milestone. Can you just talk about how you feel about that tonight, reaching that milestone here at LSU? Um, it feels great to get to 2,000 points here. Um, I've worked hard my whole basketball career, but even though my shots weren't falling, I had to figure out how can I help my team, and that was defending, stealing the ball, getting deflections. Uh, to both players, how did last year Poe energize the game in the offense? And secondly, what kind of person is she? Is she? Everyone just seems to love her as a teammate and as a player. I mean, we're playing with her last year. She played under Alexis Moore, so she knows this team like the back of her hand. Um, just gaining confidence from her um, the last two games has just been something that we needed. Of course, it's hard for Haley as a point guard that she's transitioning to that position and Poa coming in and knowing it and being able to push Haley to the two spot. I think she's done a great job of that. Um, Poa has just accepted her role at any place that she is at. And I think having an unselfish player like that on your team is something that you'll always love. I was I would second that and say that she's just accepted her role um, on the team. But also one thing that I tell Poa is just play at your own pace. And when she plays at her own place and give hesitations and do everything, she's very successful with that. Anissa and Angel, for both of you, how would you describe currently your chemistry between each other on the court. Uh, it seems like you guys have gotten to the point where you know where each other's going to be. Those passing lanes seem to always be there. Is is this where you'd like for it to be as this is, as the regular season is winding down? Um, I would definitely say, of course, we would love for it to be like that. But I know that Angel's always doubled in the post. Um, so if I have the opportunity to drive and kick it to her because nobody's talking on defense, then that's what I'll do because I'm not a selfish a selfish teammate. So as long as it's helping our team and I'm you know, we're doing well, then that's all that matters. For both players, what were the conversations like at halftime when you talked about <laughs> what went wrong in the first half and, and what kind of adjustments y'all needed to make in the second? Um I'm just gonna say we told each other to play harder. Um just telling each other we needed to wake up. If we didn't play defense, we were going to lose this game. Like I said, Alabama is a great team on the road. They just won against Tennessee at home, and I know they were coming in off that, that win hot. We ha they have a lot of great players, and they know our, our, our team really well. And playing a team the second time, of course, is always hard to just play them and beat them because they know everything that we're going to do. So I just think that we just came together second half and just played really hard together. Yeah, y'all y'all rarely press in games. Uh, <laughs> and the start of the second half, to start the press, that kind of gets you in the proper mind frame of we've got to start playing and, and just basically flying all over the place. We might need to start pressing more. I mean, being able to see what we can do, because we don't practice. I mean, we don't practice that a lot. I mean, a lot of times we're playing people straight up man to man and being able to just make that turn. We were down 10, and I think that momentum got us going. And then I think a couple times in the first half, we threw a zone at them as well. So just trying to change the defenses up as much as we can. And having a team where all five players can switch on everybody, I think that has helped us a lot as well. Angel, when, when they're fronting you and they're doubling you, how does that make things challenging for the offense? Well, it makes my job easier because I know my teammates are going to knock the shot down. I mean, I did have six assists tonight, so just being able to pass to my teammates that I know are going to make those shots, I mean, if they double me, then you know somebody else is great open. So I don't have a worry that when I do get double teamed, I know how to kick it out and see where my teammates are. And they know that I'm, a, I'm going to get double most of the time, so they're open. And like, I, like you said, I mean, me and Anissa's chemistry has just keep growing and growing. Because we've got time for a couple more here with the players. For, for either or both. The, 
the momentum building sequences. I know Angel, there was one where you had a block, and and then you know last year gets the behind the back pass to Flage, and I think there was another where um, I can't quite remember it. But just talk about those plays and how important they are in games like this, where the game was tight for three and a half quarters, and and it seemed like those moments kind of allowed you guys to sort of break free and, and push the game away. Yeah, um, I would say definitely. With us struggling in the first half and being down 10, we needed that momentum and we needed to feed off one another and we needed that energy. So I feel like it helped us a lot and just having each other back. I feel like, of course, when you score offensively and you do something good defensively. So. Last question here with players. Jessica. Angel, the behind the back pass, what did you see from that? And is this the POA that y'all have been waiting on? Yeah, I love that from Poa. I mean, like I said, she plays a special kind of game. She doesn't look to score a lot, which I get on her a lot. I mean, she op she leaves a lot of shots on the floor that she can take, but she's super unselfish. And her game honestly starts on the defensive end. She takes charges. She goes at the best defend at the best player and defends them. She gets the chippy calls and does the, the right things at the right time. And I think you always need a player on your team like Poa, and she's just super unselfish. And I'm glad it's coming to her offensively now. So defense, of course, leads to offense. I'm glad I was able to get that block. But that behind the back, <laughs> we got to take Poa out to dinner tonight. <laughs> Thank you. We'll open it up for coach. Raise your hand. We'll get a mic. Yeah, Kim. Uh, in the first half, you tried just about everything. I mean, you tried. You called an, make an early timeout to try to wake people up. You used a zone. Uh, you did everything you could. Nothing worked. At halftime, what did you say, or did you allow the players to kind of, you know, pick themselves up, and then you kind of chimed in? Well, I disagree that it didn't work. They might have been up 15 or 20 if we didn't play a zone some, so it might have slowed them down a little bit. Um, I want to give credit to Alabama first. Uh, those, those kids played their hearts out. They hit shots. They had us just a step slow on everything that we did. And, yes, I did call the timeout. There was a period of time in that first half where we looked terrible. We looked terrible, terribly out of shape. We just struggling. Halftime, what did I say to them? Um, well, today's Sunday, so it was like prayer meeting. <laughs> you don't know that if you're Catholic, right? That's a Baptist term, right? Prayer meeting. Coach, why start Poa in the second half? The press. She's the best. That's a, we call that our 11 full court, one, two, one, one. The guy on the ball was Morrow. We, we do practice it. We just don't ever have to use it, and we don't practice it like we do other things. The guy on the ball is the ball chaser. Then you have two wings, and you have the interceptor was Angel in the middle, and the guy way back is like your center fielder. That's your protector. And she really is the best protector we have on the team. So that got her on the floor quickly, and she stayed on the floor because she did other things besides that. Yeah, Coach, in the first half, it looked like they ran a lot of ball screens at y'all and like, the communication and whatnot that y'all were working through. Just what were some of the challenges that y'all well, had Well, Poa, uh, excuse me, uh, Flage had her hands full with Nye, okay? And uh, anytime she comes off an on-ball screen by a post player, you really don't want to switch that. So I think the struggle for us was getting hung up on the screen. Do I go over and get hung up, or do I go underneath and she shoots it? So I thought it was a lot of um, just uncertainty. Even though we told them how we wanted to guard each one of them, it was just, it was like everybody was doing their own thing in the first half. Coach, last year, I remember in Columbia when y'all were playing South Carolina, the night before at practice, you got on to Poa and you told her, if you're scared, tell me now, I'm not going to put you in. Tonight, to see her kind of full circle moment of coming into her own and that behind the back pass, what did you see? What I expect from Poa, I've seen that when she was playing junior college ball. Um, Poa is, uh, she, she, I want her to be louder. I want her to run the show when she's out there and uh, she doesn't, she's just not gonna do that. She's kind of quiet. Uh, but those, those skills are there. Um, I kind of saw that back behind the back pass come and she's been waiting to do that. I don't remember saying that to her in Columbia, but I trust that I did. Um, we got spanked in Columbia last year, didn't we? 
but we got better, didn't we? And we ended up winning a championship. So uh, games like today will help us get better. Uh, but I do want to compliment Alabama. I'm telling you, that team is playing very good basketball right now. And they don't need to get deflated. Um, we just got the crowd into it. We started pressing. Um, I don't press a lot, so I don't know if that was a shock to them for us to do that. It was not desperation mode yet, but I thought I can't, we can't get down 15 or 20 because then it becomes desperation mode. Then you got back in the game, and I needed to make a decision how long do I stay in the press. I think we had like uh, got 50 to 8 paint points. That is huge. Um, yeah, zone defense, baby. I played it four possessions, and I don't think they scored on any of them. I should have stayed in it longer, right? No, never. Kim, I got another poll question. 28 charges now in the season. I mean, some of these charges she takes are pretty violent. I mean, she need a flag jacket or some football pads. I mean, she, she she's, she's got to be bruised up. Some of these. She does what she needs to do to help her team win on the defensive end. And I can think there was one. I can't remember. Maybe the Arkansas game. She took a hard one, and uh, she fell hard. And I think for a day or two we kept her out of practice. Um, she's just not afraid. And it's amazing to me. I think that's really a lost art. Um, a lot of it's flopping. Uh, we see a lot of flopping, and, and they're supposed to tell you that's a flop and you're going to be worn and then get a tee. I have yet in any game I've played see a referee warn a team for flopping. And that was supposed to be emphasized this year. Uh, hers may be flopping sometime, but she's never been warned. Uh, she just has a knack for being in the right place and getting the call. Got time for one more here. Kim, I wanted to ask you about the just kind of those momentum building plays. I remember the other one when you guys took the lead, uh, you get the steal out of the press, Michaela hits the three, they come down last year, draws the charge, and then the next one was, you know, Angel gets the block and then behind the back pass. I know that may be hard to simulate in practice, but how good is it to see this team kind of building that momentum in these really tight ball games? It's something that you'll probably need going forward. Well, it was great. It's great, and you can't simulate them in practice. Uh, so these games are good for us. These games uh, will make us better. Um, you want to peak at the right time of the year. You don't want to get flat. You don't want to be burned out. You want to peak at the right time of the year. And I thought it was gut check time, really, for us in the second half. I thought it took leadership. I thought it took, obviously, skill. But it took a lot of effort to get back in that ball game and to do it quick enough to where you could extend the lead. All right, thank you.